Mr. Cleland here. So today is a snow day, so we're just going to look at some expressions in Formula Unit from a National 4. And this is towards the end of the National 4 unit of work. And to start with, we're going to look at completing a frequency table. So let's just jump straight into an example. The number of visitors to a school library at lunchtime was recorded each day for two weeks. The number of visitors to a school library at lunchtime was recorded each day for two weeks and here's the results in the table and we have to copy and complete with frequency table for these results now i've already filled it in but i'll show you where i got my answers from so first thing i'm going to do is look at this column here it started with 10 to 19 so i'll just continue that 20 to 29 30 to 39 40 to 49 50 to 59 i could even put in 60 to 69 down at the bottom but you'll notice that's where the total is. So I'm not going to have any 69. Then I just do a tally. So all I do is look up in this table and every time I see a number between 10 and 19, I give a little tally. So we've got 19, there's 1. 12, there's 2. 18, there's 3. 1, 2, 3. The total is 3. The word frequency just means how many did I have. That's it. 20 to 29. Well, I've got 1, 2, Missed one. Start again. One, two, three. One, two, three. Three in total. 30 to 39. One. Go all the way along. Nothing else. Two, three, four, five. Well, how do we do five with a tower chart? We go one, two, three, four, five. So there's five. Total five. 40 to 49. Well, if you look up here, there's only one number that's in between 40 and 49. So a tally of one total of 1. 50 to 59, well we've got 1 here, 2, 1, 2, 2. Total just means add up your frequency or your tally, 3, 6, 11, 12, 13, 14. That total here should match how many numbers are up here. And let's just check. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Excellent. Okay, let's look at an example of working out the mean and the range. These are types of averages, okay? Don't get worried about them. The questions are going to be quite wordy, but most of the time it's just doing a simple sum and then trying to make some sort of comparison by writing a, a standard statement. So let's look at it. It says eight people were taking part in a diet and the weight in kilograms of each person was recorded is shown. So here's all our weights. Part A, calculate the mean. Part B, calculate the range. We'll worry about the next bit in a minute. Let's just start off with mean and range. A quick reminder, mean, you just add all the numbers and then divide by how many numbers. And then for range, it's just the biggest take away the smallest. So let's do that below. There's all my numbers. I've just added them all up. I've used the calculator, make sure you do. And I get 624. There's eight numbers. So I've done 624 divided by eight and got 78 as a nice answer. 78 kilograms. All done in a calculator. And then for the range, well, the biggest number in this list, you can look at my sum here, is 92. The smallest number is 69. 92 take away 69 is 23 kilograms. Let's look at the second part of the question. It says, each person then followed a training program for six weeks. At the end of the training program, they were weighed again. The mean weight is now 68. The range is 21. Write two comments. So it says write two comments. So I'm going to write a comment which compares the means and a comment that compares the ranges. Let me show you those comments and then I'll talk you through them. So the first one says, on average people lost weight after training as 68 kilograms is less than 78 kilograms. When you're comparing mean, you have to always use the word on average and then say what's happened and then say why, what, what's happened to the numbers. So on average, people lost weight after training because 
68 is less than 78. Okay, let's look at our second statement. The weights of the people were less varied after training as 21 kilograms is less than 23. When you're comparing the range of numbers, it's how spread out those numbers are. If the range is very, very small, the numbers are not spread out at all. There's no variation in the numbers. If there's a massive spread of numbers, there's a massive variation. So the smaller the range, the less varied the numbers are. The bigger the range, the more varied. So that's all I say. The weights of the people were less varied after training because 21 is less than 23. Okay, example, completing a pie chart can be more complicated, can feel complicated, but it isn't really if you understand what's happening. So, let's look at an example. Eight T pupils were asked how they travelled to school, and here is a little table to tell us. We had 14 cycled, 30 walked, and 36 got the car. And here's a little table to help us make a pie chart. So here's the information again. If I add up all the total numbers of pupils, I get 80. 36 plus 30 plus 14 is 80. And what I really want to know is what fraction of the people cycled, what fraction walked, and what fraction got a car. So that's just the number of people out of 80 fraction. So if I zoom in, what I've done to get the angle is I've took the number of people out of 80, but then I've times by 360 each time. Why 360? Well, if you take a circle, there's 360 degrees in a circle. So if I do the angle times 360, that'll tell me the angle. If I do the fraction times 360, that'll tell me the angle that I need to draw in my circle for my pie chart. So for the first one, it's just 14 divided by 80 times 360. Show you this on a calculator, right? So for the first one, I did 14 divided by 80 times times 360 and I just pressed equals and I got 63. The second one I did 30 divided by 80 times 360 and I got 135 degrees. And then the last one I did 36 divided by 80 times 360 and I got 162 degrees. So that completes my table. I now need to draw a pie chart with that. And I'll show you my completed pie chart and then show you how I got there. If you've got a protractor, feel free to try this at home. Okay, some basic probability just to finish off. The diagram shows a probability spinner. When operated, the spinner randomly picks a number between 1 and 8. What's the chances of probability that we get a random number greater than 6? So probability works very simply. It's just a fraction, or it could be a decimal, but fractions are decimals. But for this, it's just a fraction. I'm looking for how many things are bigger than 6. Well, I've got 6 isn't bigger than 6. 7 is, so that's 1. 8 is, that's 2. So the probability is just 2 out of how many things it could possibly happen. Well, it could land on any number. 1 to 8. There's 8 of them. So there's a probability. 2 out of 8. Simple. I then just simplify that fraction to 1 quarter. I've just divided the top by 2 to get 1. 8 divided by 2 is 4, and there's my final answer. This has been Mr. Cleland, and today we've been looking at a few things in the expressions and formula unit. Have a great snow day wherever you are. Take care, stay safe, and goodbye.